New year, new employees, and new content. Let's check it out. My name is Corey Terry, and welcome to a new series of videos that we are calling On the Forks, where we give you an inside look of the day-to-day -day operations and shenanigans that we get into here at the Hyman Settlement School. 2023 is off to a busy start here in Hyman, and I think I can speak for most of us here on staff and say that 2022 was a rough one. The days and months winding down to the new year was a long, arduous slog as we tried to uh, recover from the flood and, and pick ourselves back up from everything with that. And I know for me personally, being able to take off some time during the holiday season to, to rest and reset my mind and come back in the new year fresh and ready to go is always a good thing. And now that the greenhouses and gardens have largely been flooded and destroyed, I am now shifting my focus here to work on more video content. This video series has been an idea that's been floating around in my head for quite some time, but just had not got around to it yet. And now that I'm not growing tomatoes and other delicious vegetables, as sad as that makes me, I now have more time to focus on uh, producing video content like this to show you all the great work happening here in Hindman. We kicked off the new year by reigniting our program staff meetings, and as we have done in previous years, staff chose a word of the year that they would use to guide their attitudes and guide their work throughout the coming months. Here are some of what they had to say. So this is, this is adaptation and evolution. I got two words instead of one. But um, the, the writing programming is like almost 50 years old. So I'm taking what's successful and adding to it and adapting it, especially for the youth in for Ironwood Writer Studio and in high school, and evolving it into the new chapter of Hyman writing history. So that's me. I just discovered my word of the year three minutes ago, and it's fearless. I am not going to be afraid of your camera. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't want to be completely fearless. I want to be able to recognize my fear and overpower them. Uh, my word of the year would probably be persistence, which is uh, just uh, sticking to goals and um, overcoming challenges and hurdles and, and dealing with those things with just an eye on the goals that you set. In February, we also welcomed two new members to our team here in Hyman. Jack Latta, who is our new Reading Labs coordinator with our Dyslexia program, and also Rebecca Fugit, who is our new Foodways program director. Jack was actually a student in our Dyslexia program back in the early days of the program, and being able to come back now and help students overcome their own reading challenges is a full circle moment for him. I'm just really excited about uh, um, being part of the program that was really important to me. Um, uh, the overall positive impact that it has on, on kids' lives and, and their ability to, uh, to, to grow and be successful. Rebecca is also no stranger to Hyman. She is a native of Knott County, and she has also been a staple producer for our Knott County Farmer's Market for many years, and she was actually the Farmer's Market Manager several years ago. I'm excited to be working at the settlement school. Um, I've been here for so many years in all different aspects. I've been a... Uh, part of Grow Appalachia, Farmer's Market Manager, uh, Market Vendor, and then now I'm here. So I have all the experiences and I'm just excited to help other farmers and people in the community grow in their food ways. We've also continued hosting our Gather and Grow events, which is our free monthly community dinner, which also includes a concert and craft for the kids. In January, we gathered around the theme of hope in the new year and enjoyed a great barbecue dinner provided by Two Big Pigs Barbecue. And music was also performed by Carla Gover. Guests were invited to share what they were hopeful for in the new year on a giant banner that says Hyman has hope. In February, we gathered around the theme of celebrating love and togetherness and were treated to a delicious Italian dinner provided by Four Star Catering and music provided by bluegrass artists Natalie Tomlinson, Jack Adams, Scott Napier, and Virgil Bolin. Sarah Kate also taught the kids a Valentine craft during the concert. In 
January, we got to see the fulfillment of a project that's been in the works since Kentucky Gives Day last year when many of you donated to our Kentucky Gives Day fundraising drive. Our book vending machines finally made their debut in four schools throughout the region, including Pineville Independent School and Middlesboro Middle School in Bell County, W.B. Muncie Elementary School in Leslie County, and Emelina Elementary School here in Knott County. Schools are using the book vending machines to incentivize positive academic behavior while also increasing access to age-appropriate books. It's created a lot of excitement in our school, not just with students, but also with the staff. Uh, so people have been really shocked, I think, with the caliber of books that are in the book machine. So I get a lot of comments like, uh, man, there are some really good books in there, or I really want that book. I've also had the question of, do I get to keep this book? So I think um, getting kids excited about reading is really important. We often put material in kids' hands and tell them to read it, uh, but we don't always get the opportunity to give them a choice in what they read. Since the flood, the campus of Hyman Settlement School hasn't quite looked the same. Much of campus is still stripped down to the studs, troublesome creeks, banks are still littered with debris, and our iconic bridge has been bent and dented, probably from my car that settled from its half-mile excursion just a few hundred feet away. Moses and Nathan, as well as some other crews, have been hard at work in recent months trying to bring campus back to its original beauty and charm. The addition that was built onto Uncle Saul's cabin, which was formerly Sarah Kate's office, has been torn down. Even before the flood, you could see a noticeable bowing in the ceiling and the floor. But after being submerged in flood water, that problem only got worse, so it was best to just tear it down. Crews have also been hard at work remodeling what used to be our old offices on the ground floor of the Mike Mullen Center. The plan is to turn the space into a multi-purpose area for food waste programming and will include meeting spaces, a demo kitchen, and a hydroponic system, all finished with building material that will, will withstand water damage should another flood come. And finally, one of the most exciting developments since the flood is the acquisition of new desks. For months, we labored in our cramped makeshift office spaces on fold-out tables while others just sat down in the middle of the dining hall. Thanks to the purchase of some used office furniture from an auction, we were finally able to get back to some bit of normalcy. Our keyboards actually lay flat on our desk, we actually have drawers for storage space, and my Funko Pop collection actually stands up a little bit better. I hope you have enjoyed our first episode of On the Forks. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe on our YouTube channel to keep you up to date for every new episode that we release, and as well as all of our other uh, live stream uh, opportunities that we have there. Also, be sure to check out our store at theorchardshop.org, and there you can find all of your Hyman swag that you can purchase, including our new Troublesome shirt that was designed by our very own Tyler Barrett. You can also keep up to date with all of our events and offerings on our website at www.hyman.org, and just click on the events tab there, and that will show you a full list of everything we have coming up, and we hope to see you here on the Forks of Troublesome Creek. And until then... My name is Corey Terry, and we'll see you next time. Come on.